Oh, hi. This week, we're going to workshop, troubleshoot, noodle around with the walking, walking dress, walk away dress pattern that I did a mock up and then some tweaks and then another mock up of in my last video, I did the final product and I'm not gonna show you all of it because I tried to make a lace overlay situation happen and adding a second skirt layer presented a whole set of issues that I may or may not have worked through. Let's get into it. Hi, it's Monday sometime afternoon, 1224. I had a bit of a lie in this morning because I am dealing with very bad cramps. I can feel I'm revving up again, so I may have to postpone what I was about to work on after I'm done here and then rally back around to it later in the day. So I am full cozy mode today. I do have pants on. I did put on like people clothes because I do feel like I get more done. It's like a proper work day if I get dressed and I'm not just in my PJs, but just know I put in this extra effort for y'all and in hopes of it helping me get this week's project done. Because listen, I used to show up at workplaces at jobs where I was employed by somebody else in my pajamas when I was feeling like this. So you're welcome. <laughs> now that you can even see, I do have to show you my hoodie before we do anything else. This is of utmost importance. This is something I've been coveting for years at this point, specifically for like the past year and a half. Not that it's absurdly priced and not that it's been unavailable. I just haven't let myself purchase it. This is a design by Still Dead Art. I need more space over here. She's lovely. I have enjoyed her work for a long time. She's got some cryptid art. And just even her holiday stuff is really fun and, and very much my vibe. Because I had such a successful market this past Saturday, I did like a holiday oddity market and I exceeded my ambitious goal number as far as sales. So even though I had to kind of fight with myself to let me buy this, where before the market even started, I was like, if I hit this number, if I make five times my table back, I will let myself buy that sweatshirt. Took that back. It was like, all right, if we make double that, I'll let myself get that sweatshirt. And then it was still like two more numbers to hit before I actually let myself go and buy it. But I did in fact purchase the sweatshirt. I'm very proud of myself because I am horrible at spending any money on me. I also got to support a small business that I really like and have admired their work for a long time. And I felt extra okay about it because last weekend is when I had those three markets in a row. One was called Midnight Merry Mint and silly me not considering the fact that that meant it was gonna be a late night one. Genuinely just went completely over my head even though I'm usually pretty good at like checking the times on that stuff. Most markets happen kind of midday. It's like 11 to three, 10 to two, 12 to four, something like that, but no, this one started at 5 p.m. So it was a lot and I was very tired because on Saturday, December 2nd, I also had another market that I had to leave the house at like 7 a.m. So I did not get much sleep the night before. And then I had my final market of the weekend on Sunday, but that was at the brewery. It was one I had put together. I was kind of there for my own sales, but also to like be a support role for the other artists there. And it always turns into just like a real cool, chill hang with people I really enjoy talking shop with because they're all small artists like most of them are single self-employed people like me there is a nice sense of camaraderie I really appreciate that so many other artists that I've been surrounded by really really put effort into like the community feeling of it all and it's not cutthroat even people selling the same kind of stuff and our direct competitors I see so much support within all of that and it it's really nice. So I also really try to foster that mentality. We're all in it together, you know? So having that be the tone of the market when people first show up and everything, it's it's really nice. I, I super enjoy those. The final purchase that was made on that final market day, I hit exactly my like ambitious goal number for the weekend. And my prices are a little all over the place. They're not all round numbers. Like it's not all like 10 or 50 or anything like some things are 8, some things are 15, some things are 12, but it was just like the right combination of numbers that I hit like a perfectly round one. It was like, this is very satisfying. So anyways, I'm feeling calmer heading into this back half of December as far as like financial stability. I have been able to earn back 
a lot of the stuff I invested throughout the past couple months because I felt like I was sinking a lot of this year. I will shout everybody out again at the end of the video, but for real, everybody over on Patreon, like, y'all kept me afloat through another year and I'm so appreciative because I get to keep doing this and keep trucking along with all my other ambitions and um, what a fucking privilege. So thank you so much for that. Okay, before we dive too deep in the cheese, I'm going to start on this project. I have sat on it for a couple weeks now. I did some designing and picked out the fabrics I wanna use and I decided I'm gonna do a lace overlay and I am gonna use really narrow bias tape to edge everything because it's just going to be a single layer of fabric. I don't know what else to use that binding for because if I'm actually binding multiple layers I don't like it being as narrow as this stuff is. It's like quarter inch but if there's a single layer of fabric tucked in there absolutely. My main front panel is going to be this pinstripe gray and black fabric. This feels very like Sleepy Hollow. This is hopefully enough <laughs> black fabric. It's not quite the right tone of black as this, kind of like a cooler shade of it, and that was gonna bother me. I mean, it's not extreme, but that is the trouble wearing black on black, which I do all the time, and it doesn't bother me in my outfits, especially if it's different textured material, like this is fleece. My pants are like jeggings essentially so like it's different texture so that's fine but to hide the difference and also just adding a little extra layer of spookification is this lace that I have it is like flocked velvet dots all over it it's kind of a nod to the cut of dress we're doing which is from 1952, the original pattern. This is the reproduction, if we didn't touch on that yet. I did end up reaching out to Stephanie Canada and she was lovely about it. She's not offering the pattern anymore. So she wanted me to like specifically mention that if I ended up using it. I think I will probably end up trying out the different patterns, but not for this week. I know you would think I would like wait to use the, fin the final fabric, but I'm happy enough with the dress I've been working on. So I'm just gonna go for that so that I have this done, but certainly something to test out in the new year if you all wanna see that. So let me know and I can kind of do a like comparison of original vintage pattern versus the reproduction that came out from Butterick. There's a lot of like polka dot dresses that came out of that era. And there's this dress I've been obsessed with from Mad Men, Betty Draper's wearing it. I think it's in one of the earlier seasons, but they're hosting a dinner party and it, has, I believe it's kind of like a sheer overlay and it has like blue and green polka dots kind of like overlaying each other and stuff in like big circles. So I don't know, something about this just felt right. So a bit of a nod, but also almost looks like a bubbling cauldron type effect. I feel like I'm imbibing some like Beetlejuice energy for this, putting my whole beetle jussy into it. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyways, so something I realized I haven't done in a hot minute. Granted, I haven't done an actual like outfit video in a hot minute, but I haven't been using my fashion notebook thing. I've done sketches in my sketching program with like the croquis I made of myself and I've been sending out quarterly fashion zines for the mail time perk folks over on Patreon. I, I hope you've been enjoying them. They're very fun to make and it's good incentive to remind me like, Right, these are things you wanted to do three months ago and haven't done slash maybe have done. And then it's good to like make myself sit and kind of think about what I do want to make in future. So I'm, I'm glad I started that project. But yeah, this is the spread I ended up coming up with. I have, mm -hmm. <laughs> the bias tape I wanna use. I have a little swatch of the polka dot fabric and a little swatch of the pinstripe and then I wrote some of my notes out with some ideas and also made notes about like the further adjustments I want to make. Like I'm gonna try on the mock-up again cause I think I wanna reshape the neckline and I do need to shorten the skirt and I just wanna make sure I like how it looks before jumping into the real fabric. Cause if I can shorten the skirt to a certain point, I am confident I will have enough of that solid black fabric to make the skirt. But that's what the mock-up is for, is to be the guinea pig. So. I'm gonna jump into that. I also thought, just to give it one more attempt, I don't hate how the dart currently looks like the side dart here. 
I think it needs to not go all the way to the apex and just come back a little bit. So kind of like partway between where it originally ended and where I ended up ending it. So what I want to try is unpicking that dart and then put the dress on and kind of just like pinch it into place and see if I get something that's going to fit a little bit better. So that is my next step. I'm going to reshape the dart, going to reshape the neckline and reshape the skirt. Everything else I'm pretty content with fit wise. The one fit issue I wasn't super jazzed about and can be easily remedied by just changing the shape. It's not really sleeves, but there's like the flap that comes down. When I was like putting my arms all the way forward, it kind of pulled a bit. So I think helping shape the darts by hand could fix that problem. And if not, I can just cut in a bit and just like reshape that a little bit. But again, the things we can do when I have the mock-up on, which means I have to get out of my sweatshirt. And I'm starting to head into another wave of misery. So I'm gonna go lay down for a little bit. I was so busy this weekend, I didn't realize there was a new Rachel Maxi video. So I may treat myself to that for a half hour or so. And then I will come back. Also, I suppose it's helpful trying this on in the state I'm in because I deal with a lot of bloating when I'm on my period. So making sure that dress is still gonna be comfortable amongst the typical fluctuations I deal with would be a pretty nice thing to, to check. Cause certain rounds of it, it, it's kind of an extreme difference between what I would call like my typical measurements versus what my body is doing when I have morphed into the hallway from The Shining, you know? All right, off I go. <laughs> I apparently went too hard dancing to Peter Gabriel, so had to had to remove a layer. Also, it's like 9.30 at night. Uh, yeah, 9.27, cool. I haven't been working on this the whole time because I've, I've been a little in and out of it. I had to do a lot of workshopping, troubleshooting perhaps, because the solid black fabric I grabbed, I did not have nearly enough yardage for this. When I was talking about the pattern in the last video, I had commented on the fact that like, it needs like five to six yards of fabric. And I was like, what Tosh? Even Bert thought it was bullshit. Would you like to tell the people your very strong feelings about the walk away dress? I think he's just upset that I'm not still snuggling him on the couch because I was, we were hanging out watching the cleaner. Then I abandoned him because I don't love him. I actually think he just needs water. Hold on. Okay, we're back. I definitely didn't have enough fabric for what I was trying to do. Also, it's only 45 width. If it was 60 width, maybe, probably could have made it work, but there was not enough yardage of it either way. So I had to get real creative with things because it did occur to me I could go purchase more fabric. I certainly use solid black fabric in a number of things. It won't go to waste. And I was trying to think like, is there another solid color I can use? Cause I really like the plan I have, but throwing in another color isn't quite what I want unless it was specifically like an acid green. And I don't happen to have that on hand, at least not in any usable quantity. But yeah, especially cause I was already dressed for the day as if I was gonna be around people. I was like ready to head out the door and then remember that there is the general strike happening today as far as demanding a ceasefire for everything going on in Palestine. My need for fabric for this project didn't feel more important than that. So I just made do with what I have. I'm glad I did because I really had to think about how to solve this problem because there's gonna be plenty of times and there have been plenty of times you gotta improvise with what you got. Like Tim Gunn says, make it work. So I made it work. And I'm actually not mad about it, especially because the solid black color is gonna be underneath the lace. It's gonna be even less noticeable. Four pieces instead of two. I guess this means since I have side seams, I could add some pockets. I had not considered that till just now. Do I want it on the overskirt though? I don't think I want pockets on the overskirt. Also, no, because the overlay I'm doing is one piece. Well, yeah, it's one piece. I didn't end up needing to sew a seam on the back. I was actually very, impressed with myself with making this work. I mean, I happen to have enough fabric for it, but this skirt piece is supposed to be cut out in two pieces because the pattern is not expecting you to have enough fabric to do it in one go. You don't need a back seam. So I actually could have kept it whole, but you, you need the split in the front because that's how the whole thing comes together. And I was very excited about that, especially because I wanted to make the skirt overlay, the lace layer, a little bit longer than the solid black because I, I just like how that looks when there's a lace layer 
hanging ever so slightly lower than the under layer. And that also got me thinking, when I go to put this together, the instructions basically tell you to bind everything at the end, and that's typically how that stuff goes. But because I have two layers to the skirt, I think before I attach it to the top, I'm gonna need to bind the center front edge of both layers of the skirt separately, bind the little section of the top back bodice that comes together at the front, because there's like a waist seam there that leads into the skirt, right? Because I want the overlay to hang separate. How to tackle that? I guess I bind all three edges separate. Yeah, because then, yeah, I'm gonna do them separate. Okay, okay, I think that's the thing. I think I have problem solved for what I'm gonna have to do next. I think that covers everything. I did shorten the skirt. I probably went about it in like the most difficult way possible. I was also completely out of frame. I was finally watching Rachel Maxey's most recent video, so my focus was on that and like where I had the camera pointing when I was initially gonna mark the bottom of the skirt while it was on the dress form and then realized having this on a flat surface which I decided was my legs on the floor versus, you know, my workbench or cutting table or literally any other flat surface that my legs are not. Yeah, just made it harder for myself. Also, like folding the fabric over and using a rotary cutter also would have expedited that process. But again, I chose the longer route for whatever reason. It was calming. My brain is not on its A-game today, so I'm just following any and all of my whims today. I've eaten almost an entire pizza. I also ate the majority of a caramel chocolate brownie halo top pint, and I had some cranberry juice and plenty of water, but also because I feel like it, I'm gonna have me a beer because a friend of mine that I was pet sitting for left me some beers and I didn't try that many of them. And this one looks really good. Even just the can art looks really pretty. I think this is from Treehouse. Yeah. And it's a milk stout called Moment of Clarity. Oh, and it is 7.7%. .7%. Odds are I will not finish this because that's kind of my MO these days, but it's been a minute, you know? It's very good. I can taste that it is on the stronger side, but I, I ain't going nowhere and I'm only on my own time tomorrow. And I figure have a beer to help with some pain relief or take painkillers. The beer seems like the more fun option. You know, that used to be like the regular thing on this hair channel. That's kind of how things started. That's why there's a beer mug in my logo. You could have essentially called this like a drunk crafting channel because I, I started out every project like that. And I just, maybe it's a phase, maybe it's just me getting older. I just don't feel like drinking most of the time. <laughs> Which listen, to be real for a moment, given my family history, I am so fucking thankful that that is how I feel about it. Like that is my relationship with alcohol. Especially working at a brewery, I have like unlimited access to it if I wanted it. But anyway, I think that covers everything I did since my last pop in. I meant to write notes down and then I just kept doing more stuff and then being like, oh, I should have written that down too. And then I was about to sit down to write notes and then figured I would just talk to y'all. So you'll still get essentially all of the notes. I'm just gonna have to edit this down to something moderately coherent. So I'm sure this is gonna help. <laughs> now I did press out my like yardage of fabric, but I cut up an old Hogwarts robe that I used to have as part of my inventory, but I took all of that stuff out a couple years ago because as we like to say, a fuck turfs forever. So that is not something I'm willing to profit off of anymore, but pretty big chunks of fabric. So I was able to work with those to get the extra pieces I needed for the solid color panels of the circle skirt. And then also have a big enough piece for the top back, which I will say the top back, this is gonna be the fully visible section, is like a really nice, dark, solid black color. It doesn't look faded at all. This is Kona fabric, I believe. I got it forever ago. I didn't know what that meant. I bought it at a fabric shop that hasn't been open for like eight years or something. <laughs> but in comparison to the black that the skirt is gonna have, I'm glad I was able to get all of the skirt pieces out of this. But yes, I should have pressed this out. It, the fabric has been pressed before, so any shrinking that might happen has already been done. 
but just to get the wrinkles out, I'm gonna press this before I sew anything. Once this is pressed, my iron is heating up already, I'm gonna press it, do the darts on the front and back pieces, then I'm going to add the bias binding to the small edge of the back bodice piece that wraps around the front. Also the long center fronts of the solid underskirt and the lace overskirt. Then I will attach the skirt to the bottom of the back bodice and then I will attach the front of the dress to the back at the shoulders. And then I think the rest of it is just binding. So I feel like most of the sewing here is going to be involving bias tape, which I think once I'm in the groove of it will be kind of fun to wrap it around everything. I think it's gonna look very satisfying at the end of all of this. Yeah, other than like sewing the skirt pieces together at the back center seam and the side seams that I added that aren't in the original pattern, I think I have walked myself through it enough to have foreseen the bias tape issues as far as the double layer because I'm just kind of throwing that in. And I was trying to look at other people's walkaway dresses and I wasn't seeing any kind of overlay. So I didn't know how anybody else handled it. So I'm just kind of winging it where I'm sure there are multiple ways to approach it. This is just the way I'm tackling it. And I want it to be a separate free flowing layer. I had thought about flatlining it. Like initially that was the plan is I was gonna kind of like flatline both layers together and then realize like, I'm gonna like how that looks less and I am also not gonna have fun flatlining it that's gonna be a pain in the ass especially circle skirts circle skirt panels no thank you and the lace is super stretchy and stuff so like that just sounded like a nightmare and I get to omit all of those I am undecided if I'm going to bind the lace bottom I think it won't look too bad hanging in the front but if I'm binding the center front, or do I just not bind the center front? Right, so this is gonna wrap around the front. Also, this is a closer match to this shade of black versus this. So I'm also much happier with that for that reason. So then this will be underneath, right? Then after I've bound everything else and I have bound the bottom of the solid, I will see how much I have and how I'm feeling about it. I have this rainbow skirt I made out of this silk charmeuse. And I was kind of frustrated with how it hung until I added bias tape to the bottom edge for a hem. All right, off to the races. We'll see if this doesn't turn into just a giant pile of fuckery, but I, I have high hopes about it. I'm not putting like a million pounds of pressure on myself for this. It's supposed to be a fun sew and it has had its challenges, but I am feeling satisfied working on this so far, just like, Overcoming the obstacles I have discovered, it's still been fun and gratifying, perhaps. So, cheers. Let's do this thing. Well, if you can believe it, it's the next day. I did not get my stuff finished last night. I, I didn't even finish the beer I was drinking. <laughs> but I did get a start on some of the bias binding and then just kept running into issues with my stitches kept being weird and like the bobbing kept snapping and I was really 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 fucking frustrated <laughs> with my sewing machine yesterday so it got to be just before midnight and Bert came running in and was like please come snuggle me and go to bed got up this morning realized right before I even bind some of these things I do need to serge the seams that have been sewn together for the skirt and then when the bodice gets attached and then at the shoulder seams. So changed the thread color on that and got it situated. That is also fine now. But yeah, I w I've been having headaches with my industrial as far as like, it just doesn't stay threaded. And the bobbin, it seems to be stitching evenly and then there's just like something that keeps happening and it's been driving me nuts. And then there was a lot of looping on the underside which hasn't been happening before. I was like, it's gotta be something with the tension with the top thread. I don't think the bobbin is the actual issue, but it's snapping because it's not getting fed the right tension or whatever from, from above. So I looked once more at how to thread the machine because I, I got, when I say manual, that's giving it too much credit. It's like a pamphlet, a leaflet perhaps. The way that they show how to thread this top situation 
is not how it should be threaded. Or maybe they just do a tremendously bad job showing it. I don't know what the problem is. I have gone through a couple different things and there are some YouTube channels that show it getting threaded the same way as the manual and I, I've continued to have issues where it's worked enough that I've gotten through stuff, but I've had frustrations because this machine was like $1,500 and the point of it is to make a lot of my sewing faster. It's supposed to expedite the process, but if I'm constantly wrestling with the bobbin, it's not really doing its job. Found another way that someone had threaded it and I was like, this one makes more sense and is not what the other ones were saying. So I did it and it's been working like a dream since. So whatever was going on before must have been incorrect. And you know, I've only had it threaded like this for today. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's been a bit of a slog, but I did get all the binding on. I did not have enough to do the lace layer, but that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with it being bound on the front center opening and not along the bottom. I, I think it still is going to look nice. And that was kind of my initial thought anyways, was to leave the bottom unhemmed. And I used all of my packages of bias tape. There's like a few inches left. There's like maybe a foot and a half left out of three packages of four yard lengths. And then I had two swaths of it that probably add up to about another four yards. So it's a lot, but actually I haven't seen another one that has two skirts. So the four packages is plenty for a normally designed one. I just attached a little knobbly button here because I extended the bias tape to make a little loop on this side. So this is the part of the front that like wraps around to the back. I will put it on and then once it is on me, I will mark and then place three cam snaps, which are just like the plastic cap snap things rather than like a grommet or something like that. And then I think, I think we're good to go. I have my backdrop set up. I have my lights in the other room. That's why we're in a slightly different spot. And I'm excited. I haven't actually used my backdrop that much since I bought it. I, I put it up at an event and I do like having it at events because I am in control of what's behind my setup and because a lot of it is like the grid cube things and you can see through that. I, I just like being able to, to limit the noise, the visual noise around my products. So yeah, let's hop over there and try this baby on. I actually haven't done any test fits since I've put this together. So I hope there isn't some like glaring issue that has arisen from the changes I made and the jerry-rigging I had to do to get the skirt together and everything. So we'll see. Now's the time we'll find out. <laughs> God, did we do it? I think we did. <gasps> well, I'll be damned. It's not like the most flawless execution, but you know what? I am very much so not mad at this. Now I essentially just removed the dart that was here because um, I am fairly flat chested, so I don't really need the extra room there. So I don't know if that was the most like eloquent way to go about reshaping this. I'm sure there's other methods, but considering I did not know what I was doing jumping into this, um, I'm not, I'm not mad at this. I probably, you know, could have used a ruler to do these where if it really bothers me, I can, I can redo them. It'll be the end of the world. I just really like how this comes in here and it's like, it's a cinch, but not uncomfortably so. Like I am still pretty bloated today. So this fitting as comfortably as it does is really nice. I like the contrasting fabric, how it's crisscrossing here. And then if we go a little lower, get the ultimate 
swooshing. I like it. I forget how fun full circle skirts are. <laughs> and I really like how the lace looks over top. Like the billowing happening in the front. Just a little, little tiny peak of the striped fabric underneath. I like it a lot and the little, little, little bit of overhang underneath the solid color into it. I like it. Actually, hold on, maybe I can flip it. Oh, I, I think I used to do this. It's like hard to orient myself, but not mad at it, not mad at all. And I don't think that's like an inappropriate length, especially with the outer skirt being longer. You know, I don't think I would be viewed as the town harlot. Eee. So thoughts on this project. I enjoyed it. I mean, I overcomplicated it in a way, but like, I am really digging how the skirt ended up coming out. Considering most of this was scrap material I had laying around, there are worse things to come out of just a, a stash pile. And I have more plans for this pinstripe fabric. I do want to make that princess seam bodice dress, that pattern by Gertie one that I have. But I'm thinking, like, the darts here, right? With a stripe, it's it's hard. I mean, any any kind of print that messes with like the spacing and direction of things, it can it can be tricky. But I think it'd still be fun to try. Mm, maybe actually, if I make that and just the center panel is stripes, and then the side pieces are like a solid something, it'd be fun to make that look very Beetlejuice esque and like bring in some acid green in the front or something. I think I do want to do that really badly. I'm enjoying the the contrast going on here. Y'all know me, I love a good color block. I'm glad I opened up the arms the way I did because I can do this now. Like I think this is going to be a really comfortable summer dress actually. So I don't know. I'm I'm glad I noodled around with it. And if y'all want me to try a version that uses Stephanie Canada's pattern that's based off the actual original vintage one from 1952. Let me know. I don't know if people are like bored because I've already done two videos on this dress, but I'm definitely swinging back into a like learning phase rather than just perfecting assembly line phase that I've been in with all of my bag manufacturing. And if you have favorite patterns you want to see me try, please let me know. I still have plenty of mine set aside that I am shifting focus towards, so there will be bag videos in the future. I will still be doing studio vlogs here and there, and like I'm sure there will just be phases of me doing that more often versus not. It's funny how this has been my busiest month as far as markets, and I haven't done any vlogs on it just because I am so busy with them that like there's not really time. Like I don't have the extra minutes to film any of the processes and like keep you all updated. It's only because I may or may not have a market this coming Saturday and next week is my last one of the year. So if you're seeing this in time, the 23rd of December, Saturday at Mill Number no. 5 in Lowell, Massachusetts from 12 to 4, I'm going to be doing the last minute market there. I'm very excited. I will have new stuff there. Like I, I've been working on another batch of bags to kind of restock slash replace. I mean, everything's a one-off really. So any of the designs that have sold out, trying to replenish with similar slash other things. Yeah. As I was talking about earlier in the video, I get to take the time to do projects like this in the midst of my busiest season, as far as my shop goes and personal life too. It's, you know, the holidays. So there's a lot going on at every corner, but thanks to everybody over on Patreon, I get to dedicate a couple days to working on something like this and just trying to better my sewing skills and experiment with things, noodle around, and also get my machine working properly because taking the time to do that, that was like a good chunk of my morning was troubleshooting that and I don't have to panic about minutes lost because it's part of the process sharing that all with you and I get to do this as part of my job because of everyone over there so thank you everyone over there. Thank you to everyone that's been buying stuff from my Etsy shop. I'm going to, I, I think, just eat some food. Can you tell I'm a little out of it? I don't even think I had any coffee today. 
and I have not eaten that much, so I'm, I'm gonna go scarf some food down. But I appreciate you all being along for this ride. We are almost at the end of another year of the bog troll community, and I'm just so appreciative. So I will see you back here in two Fridays. Thank you so much for hanging out. So I'll have it going vertically. Mm-hmm, that's a lot of ends. Oh, God damn it. Oh.